there's a shout of victory in here. There's a shout of victory in here. There's a shout of faith. There's a shout of triumph. There's a shout of there's a shout of miracles.
we have to remember who it is we're praising. Yeah. We're praising the God that was the fourth man in the fire. He was the manifestation of the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. He was the God in the lion's den. He was the God at the walls of Jericho that said we're never coming down. We're praising the same God. You are worshiping and magnifying. And he's the same God for you tonight. Whatever you came in with, whatever is built a wall in front of you, whatever is trying to take a hold of your mind and your body, I tell you what, the Holy Ghost, the power of God, will burn that thing up. The Word of God will break every single chain and bondage that you came in here with. You declare right now, I'm free in the name of Jesus. I'm free in the name of Jesus. I'm free in the name of Jesus. You say, well, how can you declare that? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is total liberty. The anointing breaks every single yoke, destroys it. And right now, the anointing's in here. The power of God is in here. Amen? Turn to somebody before you're seated and say, the power of God is working in me. Welcome everyone to the very first Miracle Crusade of 2024. You thought I was going to say Fresno. All right. First Miracle Crusade in Central California. I don't know who's been praying for this, but God has heard. <laughs> It is so good to have everyone here tonight. Make yourself at home. Uh, the presence of the Lord is here to minister to you. The word of God is going to be preached uh, with such utterance. It's going to change every
will have that information on our website and social media. You can keep up with that. Uh, if you are new to this ministry and you've never been in one of our meetings, one of the greatest things that you can take home with you next to a miracle is the word of God. So tonight we have things that are available to you that are going to minister the word of God to you. Yes, be preached from this pulpit, but we need you to take the word with you. Don't leave it in this room. Pastor Nancy has written so many wonderful books that have changed my life. There is testimonies that flood our ministry on a weekly basis of her books and materials that are delivering, setting people free, setting their lives on course, their ministries on course, their marriages on course. Everything is changing because of the word of God and the revelation in her books. So we've got three books that we want to spotlight tonight. One of my favorite and one that we like to hand out uh, to not only believers, but also to unbelievers. And this book, Peace, Living Free from Worry. Because I don't know what you have seen out there in the world today. Um, but this is the answer to every drug, uh, every pill, every prescription. This book right here will change anyone's life that is dependent uh, on having a peaceful, sound mind. We're not called to be dependent on man. We're called to depend on God, walk with God. And so this book, Peace, Living Free from Worry, allows us to live a peaceful life, have a peaceful mind, walk in God's peaceful path. Uh, she's going to teach us how you can never worry again. Or when worry shows up, how do I how do I handle that? What about anxiety? Right? Panic attacks. All of this is a lack of peace. She teaches us so skillfully how we can answer these things uh, and not just manage if you're done, you say, I'm done managing fear. I'm done managing anxiety. I'm done managing doubt and unbelief. I'm done managing oppression. This book is for you. Overcoming it. Amen. And this book goes along with it. Answer it. Every thought that comes, you've got to take it and do something with it. It doesn't belong in your mind. If it's, if it's going to bring you fear, torment, worry, anxiety, uh, confusion, you can take that thought and you can answer that thought with the word of God, send it on its way and the spirit that brought it and begin to worship God and draw on that peace of God. So she teaches us in both of these books, they go together. So if you've not heard of these or you say, I, I, I know maybe I'm fearful, I've got a situation in my body. Don't leave these and say, I just need healing because I tell you, the battle of the mind is where we gain victory first. It's not the body that needs victory first. It's our mind that needs the victory. If we think right, our body will line up right. Every situation will line up right if we think right. Amen? And in this book, Visitations from God, Pastor Nancy helps us to understand the role of a pastor in our life. The, the, the word talks about Jesus says he was moved with compassion on the people because they were uh, as sheep having no shepherd. Well, a pastor, that's what a pastor is. It's a shepherd. And so this will help us to, um, we could say in a natural way, connect with our pastor, receive from our pastor, uh, how to draw from God through our pastor. And also for those of you who are pastors, uh, how to help you in that role and in that position and that divine calling as a pastor. So that's visitations from God. Every week, God is going to visit you. And should be visiting you. And that is through your pastor in the local church. God sent God, uh, uh, God filled men and women. He said he gave gifts to men. Your pastor is God's gift to you. Not a disposable. I can pick and choose as I want and where I want to go. But they're God's gift to us. And we want to treat that gift and know how to work and draw on that gift and honor that gift. So that book is out there for you. And this one, How to Keep Your Healing, is a series, audio teaching by Pastor Nancy that has really helped those that have come to these miracle crusades. And when they leave here, they've got something in their hand that helps them to keep and hold on to, and the devil not come and try to steal that miracle that they got in their life. She lays out the teaching. You don't have to figure it out yourself. You don't have to wonder, how am I going to do this? She has it right here in this audio teaching, how to keep your healing. So these are out there. And then I believe we have a brand new shirt, merch 
merchandise. Uh, Jesus the Healer. <laughs> Jesus the Healer Crusade 2024. And has our, our vintage logo on the back. Fresno, there you go. You say, well, I'm not from Fresno. Well, if you came and you're in this area and you visited, you qualify to buy a shirt. Amen. So those are out there. Again, all of this is the room right back here. Uh, when you head out over to your right, and we'll have uh, workers and volunteers. They're in there. They're able to help you. If you, ha if you say, I have a specific need, please talk to them. Ask them. Say, I've, I've come with uh, this need or I'm struggling with this. They'll help you. She's got so many more books that we'll spotlight this week. But we want to get into your hands what's going to help you. Amen. And living for God. Uh, so now we want to do the offering. Good evening, everyone. I am so glad to have you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you so, so much for coming. How many of you are ready for a great week? Yeah. You know, Jesus said to Dad Hagen, Dad Hagen was our spiritual father for decades. And he said on one occasion, he said, I have a plan for every service. So how many of you know he has a plan for every service this week? We're coming to receive all that plan hope. Answers are in that plan. Healing is in that plan. Deliverance is in that plan. Revelation is in that plan. Amen. So come expecting every single service. I, how about we try to out-hunger our neighbor? Amen. How, how about you get a challenge going on saying, I'm more hungry than you are. T turn to him and say, I'm more hungry than you are. I'm not talking about food. I'm not talking about food. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are so thrilled to be with you. Before I go any further, I want to introduce to you our host pastors for the meetings this week. Pastors Mitch and Jen Key, stand up and turn around. And so we're so grateful. They have a precious church in Fireball, California, but they also have one here in Fresno. So we have information on that. It's at the book table back there, and it tells you times and address and all that. So we want you to pick that up if you're looking for a good home church in this area. Word and spirit. Amen. Um, we'll go ahead and receive the expense offering for this week. Uh, we'll receive one for every service. And so how many of you say it's a blessing to be a part of what God's doing in these meetings? Amen. Uh, I so appreciate, I love and I keep before me something that Jesus said to Dad Hagen. He said on one occasion, if, now listen to this. In fact, don't make out your envelopes yet. Listen to me because I, I, I spent time preparing. I don't want you to miss it. Um, Jesus said to him, he said, if you learn to follow my spirit, I'll make you rich. He said, I'm not opposed to my people being rich. I'm opposed to them being covetous. Amen. And um, it's conditional on us learning to follow the Spirit of God. I want to read to you Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17. This is the Amplified Classic. If you don't have an Amplified, you may just want to listen to how it reads. It says, Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. How does He teach us to profit? He leads us. And if we will follow where he's leading us to go, our prophet is connected to being where he told us to be, doing what he told us to do. Amen. So how many of you know he'll always lead you into more if you'll follow him? He'll never lead you into less. He'll always lead you into more. And the way he leads always brings us into profit. Amen. Amen. If we're not profiting, and we need to pay attention to the different arenas of our life. If every arena, 
not just financial arena. But if every arena is not profiting, then we have an opportunity to follow better. Amen. To be more accurate in our following. Uh, prosperity is the result. Now listen to this. Prosperity is the result of doing what he tells you to do. Prosperity is not hard when you just do what he tells you to do. Amen. Uh, Isaiah 58 in verse 11 says, And the Lord shall guide thee continually, continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought. What's that mean? You won't know anything about the drought. Amen. Because you're satisfied at a time when the, the economy around you is struggling, not you. Not you. Why? Because he's guiding you continually. If you'll follow him, he will maneuver you around strategies, around opposition, around what trips up someone else. He'll guide you past all of that. Amen. And he'll lead you into total abundance and provision. Amen. And it says, and he will satisfy your soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Amen. Now look at this. A watered garden. What You know what's so amazing about a watered garden is it draws the admiration of others. Oh, yeah. They come and they start saying, they come there for enjoyment. They come there for refreshing. Someone should look at your life and see an example of what refreshing from God looks like. Because you're the watered garden in the midst of drought. He's talking about in a time of drought, you're a watered garden. Amen. Your life looks different than everybody else's. Your life is going a different flow than everybody else's. Amen. So know this, God is always offering us promotion if we'll follow him into it. Amen. What we do with our finances is a good indicator as to whether or not our faith and our thinking is ready to move with God to the next level. Sometimes people are saying, I just need more money when it's really uh, addressing this, our thought life. Amen. And I'll quote this. You know this, what God said to Abram. He said, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I love something that Brother Joel Siegel said in his book. And I'm going to quote it. This is the last time he's getting credit. Never the whole week again. <laughs> no, you did not get it from me. Because you know what I was thinking? Let me tell you what I was thinking. I, let me tell you what I was thinking. I was reading his, his book on healing. All of his books are great. But I was reading his one on healing, and I thought, you know something? I ought to call him and pressure him. Take your name off the cover. Just put my name on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he makes this statement, being a blessing to others is the highest form of the blessing of the Lord. Being a blessing to others is the highest form of the blessing of the Lord. Why? He said, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. It is the highest purpose for our life on earth and the highest purpose for our prosperity is what? To water someone else. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if I could say it to you this way, uh, just you be a water hose. What's a water hose? It, it, it doesn't contain it. It channels. It channels the water, but you never picked up. A water hose that's being used, you never pick up a dry one. They always stay wet. They always stay wet. What's that mean? There's always a flow. Always a flow. Meaning this, being a blessing will not subtract something from your life. It will keep your life watered. Amen. Amen. Some think prosperity is only so their needs can be met. But how many of you know that's, that's limited thinking? Amen. Uh, but what kind of prosperity is it that only reaches you? The world can live at that level. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, years, uh, years ago, God said this to me. He said, one of the greatest enemies of your prosperity is your past. Why? The way you were raised will try to put a lid on the way you think, on the way you believe. How do you break that lid off? Follow him. 
follow him. Give what he tells you to give. Do what he tells you to do. Just obey him. Why? Because he wants to help take the limits off our thinking. Why? So that we ask large, believe large, and we follow him accurately. Amen. Amen. I like, I like this statement. Jesus was made poor. Why? So that we could be made rich, fully supplied, more than enough. You have to become comfortable with thinking of yourself as rich. Some people are uncomfortable with that thought. They think it's for everybody else. Listen, it, my thing is, if anybody else can have it, me too. Amen. Me too. I've had people say to me over the years, I don't have a problem giving. I have a problem for myself, being generous with myself. And you know what I say to them? That's still poverty thinking. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's not blessing thinking. That's right. poverty thinking. That's right. Amen. Amen. So deal with that. Why? Because God only wants more for you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, are you ready to give tonight or get ready to give tonight? How about that? Since I told you to put the offering envelope down earlier, didn't I? While you're making that out, we uh, make any checks payable to DM or Defrain Ministries. If you're giving by cash tonight, please make sure that you fill that offering envelope out completely. Then there's different ways you can give. You can text to give by texting the letters DM to the number on the screen. You can also online, you can give at DufresneMinistries.org slash give. So those are ways to give. Um, I want to introduce to you, I have family here. I have family here. Morgan, come up here. This is my daughter-in-law, Morgan. And then Grant over here is my son. You're going to get to hear him all week. How about where's Bear? You see me. I see you smirking. Come on up here. Bear, Nanny Cake, Bubs, where are you? Bubs, where are you? Come on up here. Y'all got to get up. You, you little short people got to get up here. Come here, Nanny Cake. Get up here. Get up here. Bubsy, you, you, you going up. You, you not all that. You not all that yet. Till he reaches as tall as me, he's going to have to get up there with him. <laughs> so we're glad that they're here. Uh, David Ellis, thank you so much for being here. We are looking forward to a great week. Jacob Smith, thank you, man, for being here. I missed you. It's good to see you again. And then Miss Cindy Black. Then yeah. look at this pretty lady. Miss Joy comes and just... If, if you ever hear the upper registers, that's not Pastor Mitch. <laughs> that is not him. That's Miss Joy up there, and, and she kind of lives alone up there. You know, none of us probably should go visit her up there. We should all just let her live on her own lane right up there in the glory flow up there, you know. <laughs> So thank you so much for being here this week. And it's going to be good, good, good. But what about this? Joel and Amy Siegel, stand up and give them a great big God bless you. You don't want to miss it. This couple has, a, 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 their ministry is such, such, such a blessing. I love them dearly. They are precious supply to my life. I feed on their materials. And I tell you, you come in the morning meetings and it will, you will gain revelation if you're halfway paying attention. <laughs> Just even halfway paying attention. And it will stir you. And they traveled with Dad Hagen seven years. And I tell you, you can tell the like spirit in it and the, the like flow. And so come expecting every service. Amen. Are you ready to give tonight? Hold your offering up before the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. We're so grateful for what you have for us. We're hungry tonight. We're in this place ready to move with you, ready to receive all that you have for us. And Father, as we give tonight, we're so grateful to know you're guiding us, you're leading us, and we say this, we're following. Every single directive that you give us, we're following it. We love to obey your word. Your word is our delight. What you instruct of us is our great joy. And we're so thankful for what all your plan holds for us. And we call every single need of this crusade fully met. And we're believing for double, Father. We thank you for the double. And we say it all comes. Say this with me. All the money that my church needs, it'll come. All the money that I need, 
it'll come. All the money that my business needs, it'll come. And we will receive double in these meetings for the expenses to be a greater blessing. And everybody said, amen. Ushers, go ahead. Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Just a Worthy is the Lamb. Come on, here, guys. Worthy is the Lamb. and we're so thankful. We're so thankful tonight that we get to come into your presence so freely, so boldly. It's a family belonging. Jesus, we worship you.
Just worship here for a second. Come on, lift up your voice. Just sing out to the Lord. We worship you, my Jesus. To hear. 
Jesus, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you for that all-conquering word. We've come tonight, Father, to receive. Today, as Brother Copeland has so beautifully said, today's our receiving day. Today is my receiving day. Every day is my receiving day. And I've come to receive. And I thank you, Father. I thank you, I thank you. Give glory, glory and honor. right at the very base of your skull I don't know how to say it not being a medical doctor it's like your skull isn't sitting right I don't know if it's misaligned it's misaligned I don't know how that is misaligned but it is it's caused you great difficulty uh, there's power the power of God's healing that right now right there at the very base of the skull in that area if that's the area you've been having difficulty, receive what God has for you. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Because that has been the host of other problems that you've had there. And you're trying to deal with it from other places. And that's the place that is the root of that problem. And so God's dealing with that right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, we glorify you, we glorify you, we glorify you. In fact, somebody, you can, you can, you can sense the heat. What is that? That's the anointing of God. It's, it's, it's coming from that area and just traveling down the tops of your shoulders. You can sense that. Respond to that. Amen. Just say, I receive that. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Father. Mashikiye. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus, you're so good. We glorify you, we glorify you. We glorify you. We thank you, Father. I so appreciate when he starts moving this way because he's not calling out some to include some and leave others out. He's letting you know the anointing's here that you can just receive for anything in your body. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for that, Father. We glorify. We glorify. Somebody's throat condition is being healed. There's, it seems to me there's been a growth in your throat. That's being healed right now. Just raise up your hand and receive that if that describes your need. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. And something down here, even right here, Right here, right at the base of the front of the neck, right at the top of that collarbone, right in the middle, there's been a growth there that, that's leaving right now in Jesus' name. That's leaving right now. Hallelujah. And those who are watching online, get in on this. If that describes your need, release your faith. We thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. 
We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And that, that injured collarbone made whole. Years ago, that collarbone was injured. That's made whole right now. That's made whole right now. Just receive that. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We glorify you. And thyroids are being healed. Thyroids. Thyroids are being healed right now. Hallelujah. Just receive that. Just receive that. Hallelujah. 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 Just say, I receive mine. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. I thank you for it, Father. We glorify you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Let's just sing it a little bit more. We glorify your name. We glorify. being healed right now heart conditions are being healed right now so just attach your faith to the flow of that power amen hallelujah high blood pressure anything to do with the heart to say I receive I receive of that power I receive of that power we thank you father we thank you Jesus we thank you Jesus we thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. Where's that microphone that Morgan had? You had that microphone. I don't know if it's working. Is that working? Uh, Brother Joel, come up here. Just come up here. It seems to me God's wanting you to call out some things by the Spirit. Yeah. Well, uh, very, very clearly. Um, you mentioned glands of the thyroid a little bit ago, but there's uh, people that your gland is not doing what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's not producing. And in some cases, your gland is missing. Mm -hmm. Just not even there. And there's recreation happening. Yes. There's re restoration and recreation. Restoration and recreation. We're going to hear about it. We're going to hear about it. Restoration, recreation. This whole week, creative, creative, creative miracles. This whole week, hallelujah, glory. Is that all you got? Just stay up here a little bit, just, just to give it time. Just let's take our time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, where we saw one manifestation of healing, there will be multiple. Yes. Because we're in an era of increase. Of the increase of his kingdom, there is no end. Yes. <laughs> and 
the kingdom, the power, the glory multiplies as God's people engage and carry it. And that multiplication is released. Amen. And so where we saw one, there'll be three. Where we saw three, there'll be 30. Marked multiplication. Marked increase. Marked increase. And bladder disorder right now. Bladders are being healed now. Ha! Huh. Yay! Growths. Growths on the bladder. Cancers on the bladder are being healed now. Thank you, Father. Thank Him for the increase of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. The jaw, the jaw is being healed. The jaw is loose. <laughs> the pain is gone. The joints are free because you're redeemed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Whew, glory, glory. Just hold on to that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm reminded I, I just finished a month or so ago filming some of the daily episodes for Jesus the Healer. And we took something that Dad Hagen said, and he said, when reverence, when reverence and honor are restored, there will be a multiplication of the, and a restoration and a multiplication of the miraculous power of God. This room, this week, reverence and honor, reverence and honor, reverence and honor can can i tell you so many times people think that reverence and honor just means quiet reverence and honor means moving with him someone can be in a quiet position physically a reverent posture and not moving with him reverence and honor means Follow him, following him, moving. When he says do something, we say, yes, sir. So we've all come to reverence and honor him. Only the part of the word that we reverence is the part we can partake of. Only the part we honor is the part we can receive of. We've come to receive with from every flow, every flow every flow that God has for us this week. Amen. We call him savior. We call him healer. We call him provider, restorer, redeemer. All that you need, he is that. If you'll honor him as that, and we've come to honor him as that. The only the parts of the word we honor are the parts that we'll partake of. So we've come to honor all of it. Amen. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We glorify you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 Now, everyone just put your hands down for a moment. But if you say, I can already tell something is different and something that was called out, or maybe it wasn't even called out. But you can say, I can tell something's already beginning to change or has changed. Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. Raise your hand real high so we can see it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's hands going up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're testifying that His power is for us. Amen. And we take it. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. You can be seated if you would. Hallelujah. Be seated if you would tonight. We glorify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. How many of you say the Lord is good? <laughs> and his mercy endures forever. 
forever. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? God's not mad at you. So just relax. Because the accuser of the brethren paints you in a negative light to you. To try to get you to not receive of his goodness and love for you. So we've come to receive this week. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn with me tonight if you would. And listen, we'll just let the Holy Ghost do whatever he wants to do in what order he wants to do it, right? Uh, Psalm chapter 105. How many of you know under a new covenant, it's a better covenant? What's that mean? Everything that the old covenant contained, but more. Yes. Better. Amen. Amen. How many of you know the word tells us we're redeemed from the curse of the law? Yes. How many of you know we're not redeemed from the blessing of the law? That's right. Amen. Amen. We don't need to be redeemed from the blessing. So everything they had of the blessing, but more. Amen. But everything that was of the curse doesn't apply anymore. Right. It doesn't Amen. apply anymore to us. Amen. 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 So Psalm chapter 105. Hello, Pastor Debbie. I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 105 and verse 37. This ought to thrill you. This verse, Psalm 105, verse 37, talking of when God delivered his people out of Egypt, he brought them forth also with silver and gold. Look at this. And there was not one, not one, not one, not one feeble person among their tribes. Not one. And our covenant's better. Better. Yes. Yes. Better. Amen. 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 I was reading this a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I got jealous <laughs> for the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. 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 That we ought to be able to say not one. Because no. no. uh, history tells us we're talking three million yes. Hebrews. Yeah. Not one. Yeah. How great is God's power? Now, you, have to, you have to think of this, not one feeble one among them. We're talking about slave bodies now. We're not just talking about businessmen. We're not talking about the housewife. We're talking about abused bodies, overworked, neglected, not given proper treatment, and not one. Not one of them feeble. Think of that. How large that is yes. of an offer. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's so good. When did that wholeness happen? Well, you remember on the Passover night, they, every household was to take a lamb, put the blood on the doorposts, on the lintel, the top of it, on the sides of it. But not just that, that wasn't all. Then they were to be in the house doing something. Eating. Yeah. Yes. Eat the lamb. Yes. Yes. How many of you know Jesus is the lamb yes. slain? Yes. Yes. And Jesus is the word made flesh. Yes. As you eat the word. Yes. Yes. As we eat the word this week. Yes. As we eat yes. the word this yes. week. Yes. Yes. It is possible. Yes. Yes. Not one, feet. not one, not one, not one. But the thing is, we've gotten used to many. Seriously, even in our own lives, we've gotten used to that hurting, coping with this, managing with that, living with this. What is that? Wrong thinking. Wrong thinking robs us of the highest flow. And we need to sober up and say, no Hebrew. No Hebrew with a lesser covenant. Come on. 
Amen. should have more than me. And if they do, I'm doing it wrong and I'm not okay with doing it wrong anymore. I'm not okay with doing it wrong anymore. Amen. Exodus chapter 11. I just want you to see one quick phrase. Exodus chapter 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said something to me years ago. He said, You'll, you will have everything you're okay with. He didn't say you'll have everything I provided. He said, you'll have everything you're okay with. If you're okay with having to deal with that recurring problem. But if you ever decide I'm done dealing with and hosting what ought not be part of my life, the power of God will back you up. But we have to get done with it. Amen. Exodus chapter 11. And just the last phrase of verse 7. That you may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. What's that mean? God puts a difference between the world and His people. God put a difference. That difference needs to show up more than it's showing up. Not in attitude, but in the fruit of our life. In the flow of our life. That our bodies shouldn't look like the unsaved neighbors down the road. Our homes should not look like the homes of the unsaved neighbors down the road. Our marriages... Our children, our finances should not look like. Should not. And if they are, if they are in comparison similar, we're doing it wrong. We don't have less. We're doing it wrong. Notice this. It said when we said that God delivered his people, he brought them forth. Also, I love this. I'm just going back. You stay where you're at. I'm going, I'm going back to that Psalm 105. He brought them forth with. Yes. With. with. Wow. He can't bring us, he doesn't ever bring us forth without. Yeah. That's good. That's good. When he brings us forth, it's with something. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, there needs to be a difference yeah. in our bodies. Yeah. There needs to be a difference in our bodies and everybody else's body that doesn't belong to Christ. There needs to be a difference. And if it's not different, we, we've got to quit being okay with that. Let's honor the word. Amen. You know this, and we won't take time to turn there. James said, is there any sick among you? Meaning he was expecting that there be no sick. Instead of saying, the 94% of you that are sick among you. He said, is there? He wasn't assuming there was. Why? Because we're, off, we're offered none. No, no sickness. Not one. Not one. Not one. Um... We need to purpose to receive, on purpose, what he offers. Know this, you don't float into this flow. You take definite steps to occupy that flow and stay in that flow. Jesus walked up to the man at the pool of Bethesda, and he said this, wilt thou be made whole? He offered him wholeness. He didn't offer him feeling better. Right. He didn't offer him, do you want your home put back together? Right. Do you want, do you want, the, uh, offer a wholeness, not just for the body, but spirit, soul, body, wholeness. Right. Jesus has never offered us partial. Right. Yes. He's always only ever offered us wholeness. Why would we settle for partial? Amen. 
Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. This isn't deep. This is just to rattle our cage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen, amen. That what have we been okay with? Yeah. Something on the inside of us has to change so that things around us will change. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 2. We'll just take a moment and read this whole passage. Matthew 9 verse 2. And behold, they brought to him a sick man of the palsy lying on a bed. I, I like this next phrase. And Jesus seeing their faith. Jesus seeing their faith. Jesus, did, Jesus didn't see a healed man there. He was carrying, they were carrying a man who needed healing. But Jesus saw their faith. He wasn't occupied with the man's body. He's occupied with, can I see faith? And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Verse 5, For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive, to forgive sins, then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Notice this, that Jesus said, Whether is easier to say. To say. To say. The arising of this man was in saying. It's all about saying. It's not hard to say, no. No. I'm done with this. Right. I'm done living this way. Yeah. And to say it every day, I'm done living that way. <laughs> Notice he didn't say which is easier to do. Why? Because God doesn't ask you to do it. He asks you to say it. He does it. Which is easier to say. <laughs> We turn it hard. We turn it hard. Amen. We turn. Are y'all a little cold in here? Yes. Pay, pay attention to that for me. Uh, healing. Look at this. Healing is as easy as saying. Healing is as easy as saying. Healing is as easy as saying. Body parts needing to be put back is as easy as saying. Body parts that need to be restored is as easy as saying. Something that's not been working for years is as easy as saying. <laughs> what turns it hard? We, go, we leave saying and go to thinking. <laughs> He didn't say anything about your thinking. Yeah. It's all about your saying. Yeah. My God. Mm. Jesus, is, Jesus is letting us know how he worked, how he cooperated with God who worked this miracle. I say it, God does it. There's a divine order. God, something has to be said before something can be performed. You're not left with the performing part. It's not your job to get rid of pain. Amen. It's Amen. not your Amen. job to get rid of sickness. Yes. It's not your job to feel bad because you're feeling pain. That's now, what right. I mean by that is to feel under condemnation and guilt. Come yeah. on, come on. Amen. 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 Because the devil will accuse your faith that if you had faith, you wouldn't be feeling this. What you feel has nothing, is none of the devil's business. Amen. 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 And you better Amen. tell him so. Yeah. 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 Amen. And I will not feel bad about my faith walk just because I feel pain. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Good. Come on. 
because it's not about what you feel, it's about what you say. It's about what you say. Because even when you're feeling bad, start saying something. Even when there's pain, start saying something. Because he said, which is easier to say. How simple. Hallelujah. What's this mean? Your healing is easy. Yes. Your miracle is easy. Yes, is. Pastor Nancy, you don't understand how complicated my situation is. Your answer is easy. Yes. Quit calling it complicated. Yes. Call it easy. Yes. From now, to, you know what your homework assignment is when you leave this place? You call everything easy. Yes. Everything yes. easy. Yes. Everything yes. is easy. Yes. Every situation you're facing, I call you easy. Yes. Yes. Call you easy. Yes. easy for God's power. Not yes. you don't you're not working it. Easy for God's power. Where do we struggle when we call it hard? When we call it difficult? When we say, I, but, I, but my situation, we lay such credibility on the opposition. Instead of saying, you are easy to fix. Yeah, that's right. yeah. that's right. that's Say it's easy. He's, Jesus, Jesus approached this, which is easier. To, this is what he said. He's calling this palsy an easy situation. Amen. He didn't call anything hard. He called it easy. And he's telling them, I'm showing you how to do this. It's easy to say. It's easy to say. What turns it hard? Our thinking. We try to analyze it. We try to uh, reason it, calculate it, measure it. Wonder when it's going to leave. None of our business. It's, it's our job to say, this is easy. This is so easy for God. This is so easy for God. This is so easy for, this is so easy for God. The devil wants you to think it's hard because it's then outside your faith is what he wants to accuse you with. This is beyond your, your faith. But it's all about, it's so easy to say. It's so easy for me to say that I have no more pain. It's so easy for me to say that I, that I have those body parts back. It is so easy to say. It is so easy to say that my home is paid for. It is so easy to say that my children are fulfilling the plan of God. It's so easy for me to say that the past is gone. Yes. But there's something about flesh that loves to make it hard. Yes. Yes. What was it? What was it? Uh, the leper. Was it Naaman? The leper. The military man. Yeah. Naaman. Yeah. Um, he was not a Jew. But he had a little Jewish servant gal in his home. And she was carried off into captivity and into the home of this man and served there. And she saw the condition of him and saw, no doubt, the struggles that would have been accompanying that condition. And she said, oh, I wish that my master was where the prophet was. Notice this. She didn't say good enough for you. You carried me into captivity. Yeah. No, yeah. no, right. no offense yeah. about her place, about her condition, her compassion. Yeah. Right? She could have taken the wrong viewpoint. Yeah. But she says, oh, I, wish he were, I wished you were where the prophet was because then you'd receive your healing. Yeah. And there was an exchange that happened right. and a communication that happened. And he set up a time yeah. that he would travel to where the prophet lived. Yeah. And the prophet didn't even come out and see this man of honor, didn't see this decorated military right. man. He sent his servant to the door yeah. and said, go dip seven times in the river Jordan and your flesh will come again <laughs> clean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened? He said something. He said something easy to do. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. 
He just said something easy to go dip seven times. We can all dip seven times. Even people who can't swim, Ramoses. <laughs> uh, they crack me up. They're from the Philippines. They live on an island and they can't swim. But even better than that, Pastor Noel signed up for the Navy. <laughs> I love that story. I'm not mocking you. Naaman was in the same situation, I'm assuming. Even, even someone who can't swim can dip. You don't have to have any skill to dip. Yeah, just go dip seven times. And when Naaman heard the simplicity of the directions, he was offended. Why? It was beneath him. He was a man that was used to acts of valor. He was a man who was used to doing things in, the, in life and death situations. He was a man of bravery, of courage, and he was ready to take on the next brave command to deal with this. And it's, go dip. God disappointed his, disappointed his humanity. What a lesson. My God. And he would not do it because he thought it was beneath him. He was used to hard tasks. You know what? So many Christians are used to the hard mental processes they go through before they arrive in their head at, at their answer. If we're on the hard road, we're on the wrong road. Because God doesn't put his children in a hard flow. He puts us in an easy flow. And Naaman refused. He was going to pick up his little, his, his little uh, pride and just go back home unhealed rather than to be deprived of the honor of doing something hard to earn his healing. And God was saying, you can't earn what belongs to me. The glory belonged to God. Naaman was used to being uh, celebrated in his bravery. But not on this one, you're not. Not on this one. God gets celebrated, not you. So God gives something that's not worth celebrating. You can't go home and say, I'm so great I dipped seven times. Yeah, little Johnny who's three, he did it eight <laughs> times today. <laughs> so no, no one goes home bragging that I dipped seven times in my great faith. No, just keep it simple. Why? So that he, he, he's, he's not, you don't get tempted to take what's his. So he was going to go, he, he chose the thinking of, I, will, I would rather go home unhealed than submit to the simplicity of the, the, the juvenile request of that. And a servant checked him and said, Master, if he would have asked something hard of you, you'd have done it. And he didn't ask you any of anything hard. He gave you something easy and you won't do it. So many people are used to the hard flow that they don't even recognize the easy flow where their miracle lives. We, we've all done it. We've all done it. Get in that mental flow. Get in that reasoning. And just, I'm just, I'm just standing in faith and sweating bullets. A tear in their voice. I'm just hanging on. I'm, I'm standing in faith. If your veins are bulging, you're, you're standing on the wrong thing. Yeah. 
God gives us something easy. Why? Because Jesus already did the hard part. There's no hard part left. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just can't forgive that person. Father, it's so easy to forgive them. It's as easy as saying. Well, I don't believe that. Keep saying it. Keep saying it until you shift from what's hard to what's easy. Because we have been practicing many times the hard so long that we don't even know the flow of the easy. Can I say this? Faith is easy. Can I say this? Healing is easy. As long as you stay just trying to do your part. You're going to try to do God's part, you just turned it hard. Why? Because you're not qualified, equipped to do God's part. I love something. Um, I was reading, Brother Richard Roberts called me several months ago, and he said, what, what are you doing? I was down in Florida, and I said, I'm reading your dad's book. And I said, I want to know why that's not in print. Because we had to scrounge around to find it. It was so, so good. And he said, they're coming back in print. I said, good, good. Um, but in this, Brother Roberts was saying he was in the prayer tower there at ORU and had uh, partners that had sent in letters of their needs. And he said, I was praying so hard for my partners. He said, I was, the, the heartbreaking conditions that I was reading, all the situations and he said, I was praying so hard. I was praying so hard for him. And he said, and God spoke to me and stopped me and said, you don't need to pray hard. Pray easy. I do the hard part. <laughs> I'm believing hard. No. You might be trying hard, but you're not believing hard. <laughs> Check ourselves, right? Check ourselves. Check ourselves. We don't have to believe hard. We believe easy. And if it's not easy, we're invited to the easy flow. And can I tell you this? It's higher than the hard flow. And in listening to some of these ministers who have private airplanes and they'll talk about them. We were talking with one minister. His plane gets, they, they cruise at 51,000 feet. You like your commercial flights cruise at 35. Uh -huh. This one cruises at 51. <laughs> yes, amen. <laughs> it's so easy up there. And why do they cruise that high? It's so easy up there. Yes. <laughs> no turbulence yeah. or little turbulence compared to yeah. down here yeah. the easy flow yeah. it's a higher flow it's, a it's higher. not a lesser flow it's a higher yes. flow yes. Amen. amen how we approach it makes all the difference yes. if we think of it as hard we turned it hard Amen. Amen. If we think it's easy, it's easy. I want to read to you, just let me read out of Proverbs 14, verse 30. You can just note it if you want. This is an amplified classic. A calm and undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body. A calm. What's that? It's easy. When people, when people are trying to struggle with a hard flow, they're, they're not living calm. Coming up in a healing line. I receive, I receive. 
I don't mock it. I'm saying my heart goes out because they're trying. Please come on, I've received. A calm. 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 An undisturbed mind. And heart are the life and health of the body. So how we think and how we approach things with the mental arena is going to show up in our physical body. The Living Bible, this is interesting of that verse. The Living Bible says, a relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. What's that? It's easy. It's easy. Amen? I've learned this. If something is hard, I'm doing it wrong. It's not about getting the devil to leave me alone. If it's hard, I'm doing it wrong. I'm thinking about it wrong. I'm talking about it wrong. What's our homework? It's all easy. Every situation. I'm, and, and I want you, when you go home, uh, be specific in the situation. Yes. That, that problem on the job, it's easy. That, that difficulty with the child, it's easy now. Why? It's easy to say. Easy to say. I say it's easy. 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 I say my back working right is easy. I say those organs Yes. That are compromised, yes. they work easy. easy. They work yes. easy. Yes. They work easy. Yes. Wrong thinking magnifies hardness. Yes. Yes. How many times we've magnified hardness? We know we're in wrong thinking now. The, the renewed mind uh, stays in the easy flow. Can I tell you this? It's beneath our exalted position to struggle. We've been raised and seated with Christ. It is beneath us to struggle. Because we're not living in that mindful of that easy place that we've been raised to. Raised and seated with him. Ruling and reigning. Not being pushed around and troubled and harassed. And you can't go to sleep at night because your mind is tormented. God offers you something so far different. Go to bed and just say, it's so easy. It's so easy. Amen. Can I read you just a few words? Can, let me read you just a few scriptures in, in connection with this. And don't, we won't take time to turn there, but you might want to note them. Proverbs 13, verse 15. Look at this. The way of the transgressor is hard. What's that mean? If I'm in the hard flow, I have transgressed his flow. I have stepped out of his flow if it's hard. The way of the transgressor. So you can look at that different ways. If you transgress his plan, you turned your life hard. But if I'm recognizing I'm in a hard flow, then that lets me know I'm out of the flow he offers me. Because the way of the transgressor is hard. Proverbs 14, verse 6. This is the King James. It says, A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy to him that understands. If we're not calling it easy, we're invited to understand something further. We just need to understand something a little bit, a little bit further. What is that? He already did the hard part. The Amplified says this of Proverbs 14, 6. A scoffer seeks wisdom in vain for his very attitude blinds and deafens him to it. But knowledge is easy to him who being teachable understands. What's this mean? If you'll believe what I say tonight and be teachable, <laughs> you can walk out of here saying it's easy. When the devil's bombarding your mind says, you don't know what to do about that devil that's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. You don't understand. This has been off course for years. It's easy. It's easy. It's so easy for me to say it's easy. And if I say it's hard, I turn it hard. 
Because what we say is the direction it turns. The hard direction or the easy direction. Amen. Proverbs 15, 19, and this is the Living Bible. Just note this, Proverbs 15, 19, the Living Bible. It says, a lazy fellow has trouble all through life. <laughs> but look at this, the good man's path is easy. His path is easy. His path is easy. Romans 10, 8. Romans 10, 8. This is the Living Bible. It says this, For salvation that comes from trusting Christ, which is what we preach, is already within easy reach of each of us. It is as near as our own hearts and our mouth. What's he saying? You believe with your heart, you say it with your mouth, and now you have just put everything you need within easy reach. What is this? It's the law of faith. That's the law of faith. Believe with your heart, say with your mouth. Believe with your heart, say with your mouth. Jesus walked up to that man with palsy, and he believed in his heart, and he said with his mouth, which is easier to say, rise and walk. And you say, Pastor Nancy, I'm having trouble believing it in my heart. Well, just, just keep saying it with your mouth. Just keep saying it with your mouth. Because for years we have told ourselves and dealt with something as hard. You don't change that in a moment sometimes. But give yourself time to process it as easy instead of continuing to process it as hard. Amen. I don't know about you, I want the easy part. I said, I want the easy part. Know this, as a new creature in Christ, we are now partakers of a divine nature. The nature of God's on the inside of us. That turns everything easy because we're, we're operating out of His life, His nature. His ability is what we're drawing on when we're calling it easy. We're not drawing on mental ability. Amen. We're not drawing on financial ability. We're not drawing on physical ability. We're, we're drawing on divine ability that's on the inside of us and that turns everything easy because it's the divine one doing it. If you're born again, the nature of God is on the inside of you and it's in there to perform for you so that you become a partaker of all that that divine nature has made yours. <laughs> I love something E.W. Kenyon said. As our minds are renewed, what's it mean our minds are renewed? As, our, as we begin to think in line with the word. Think in line with the word. As our minds are renewed, the devil is no longer a problem to us. Listen to that. As our minds are renewed, the devil is no longer a problem to us. It doesn't mean he leaves us alone. It means that he's not worthy of our notice. Yes. Can I tell you this? When we call physical symptoms, this is so easy. This is so easy. Our notice of it will be different. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. And it's how we notice something that determines how it lives with us. Yes. Yeah. So Kenyon said, as our minds are renewed, the devil is no longer a problem to us. For knowledge of the word shows and reveals to us his utter defeat and our complete victory. Amen. That situation that's tried to trouble you is utterly defeated. It's already utterly defeated. Call it that. It's, easy, it's easier to call it utterly defeated than overwhelming. Then Kenyon goes on and says, We are authorized to live as though we have no enemy. For he has been stripped and defeated. Renewing the mind and exercising our faith makes us an intelligent victor. Amen. Renewing the mind prepares and equips us yes. to overcome all adversity. Yes. 
when we know that something that's showing up to oppose us has already been utterly defeated, it's easy. Then Dad Hagen would make this statement. Any Christian who is in bondage is in bondage to an unrenewed mind, not to the devil. What is he? Wrong thinking. You know what I'm, you know what I'm dealing with you about tonight? Thinking. Our thinking. Instead of thinking it's hard, call it easy. Because it's easier to say. Amen. Amen. Isn't this true? There's nothing more draining than a troubled mind. There's nothing more tiring than a troubled mind. Nothing more tiring than doing what we ought not be doing. You'll never get away from your mind. So you might as well have one you live with. How many times we'd like to take it off and set it on the table and walk on out the door without that? Not going to happen. So what's that mean? Take charge of the way you think. Think in line with the Word. Think in line with who you are in Christ. The devil is always trying to point you back to who you are in the flesh because in the flesh you fail. Yeah. Yeah. But in faith and in your spirit, man, you're in Christ. Yes. Amen. 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 So Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we better not go any further. We're going to start digging a whole nother hole <laughs> and throw the devil in it. Why? We don't live in holes anymore. He lives in holes. He's, he's going to be cast into a bottomless pit. What's this mean? For a thousand years, the sensation of falling in cannot find his bearings, cannot, cannot find footing anywhere. We're throwing him in a hole. Hallelujah. Stand with me to your feet tonight. Father, we thank you for your word. Aren't you thrilled with his word tonight? Yes. <laughs> it's, easy. It's, easy. it's easy. It's easy. I'm living in the easy flow. I'm living in the easy flow. How easy was it for all of those Hebrews to walk out of Egypt since there was not one feeble one among them? It was so easy for them to just walk out. Amen. If I could say this before you get out of bed in the morning, start talking about how easy today is. Start talking about how easily your body works, how easily those body parts work, how easily the money comes that you need, how easily you're able to put your hand to something and see it fulfilled. Amen. You're talking about something, you might as well talk about easy. Better than that, how about going to bed tonight thinking how easy it is? Which is easier to say? Which is easier to say? Which is easier to say? It's so easy to say. It's so easy to say. That's why believing is so easy for you. That's believing is so easy for you because it's so easy to say. Because the devil always say, you don't have enough faith. Devil, it's so easy to say. It's so easy to say. God's working on it right now. Every answer I need is moving in my life. The power of God's working right now. It's so easy to say it. It's so easy to say it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight. Just lift up your hands. Lift up your voice to him tonight. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> my, my health is so easy. My wholeness is so easy. That condition that's so hard for man is so easy with God. It's so easy with God. We have given so much clout to certain words of sickness and disease and we why because they have shown themselves to push around humanity 
but they can't push around the divine nature in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing something. I bet Cindy's got an easy song. <laughs> oh, it's so easy. God has made this thing easy. No longer hard, no longer down, no longer bound. Cause we've been raised up to reign in life. We've been seated tonight in Him and Christ. This is easy. It's so easy in Him. It's the nature of God. It's living on the inside. He's done all that's hard. All I have to do is tap into that nature. Oh, and say praise God, the work's done. It's easy to get healed. It's easy to be free. It's easy to walk in divine health. It's easy for me. It's easy.
that means every load you came in with should have been lifted. Every sense of heaviness lifted. Amen. Amen. And if it hasn't, it's because you're hanging on to it. Let's help them not hang on to it. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's easy. Hallelujah. Turn around to four people around you and say it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Hallelujah, just whatever God tells you. Oh, the era. This era. This era will be easy. Yeah. Ah, cool. Check this out. Ah, the era. Miracles will be easy. Yeah. Science and wonders will be easy. This is the era of the Almighty. He yeah. is the one that started this. He is the one that will finish it. Ah, he is the Almighty God. He is the one that said to Abraham, Nothing's too hard for me. Nothing is too hard for me. Nothing is too hard for me. All my applications, those that will say it's easy, those that will say the plan of God is easy, the Almighty God will rise up. The Almighty God will do great things for them. Oh, my Zikito, it's the work of the Almighty God. It's His power. It's He's the one. Oh, God, He's the one that promised Abraham the blessing. He is the one that too. So go, Mahatma Des Sikata. He is the one that said to Abraham, Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing is too hard for me. Yeah. Nothing is too hard for me. 
When you keep saying nothing is too hard, the Almighty God will do the work. The Almighty God will do the work. How much to carry your life? It will be easy. It will be an easy life. Miracles, miracles, signs and wonders. Because this is the era of the Almighty God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So to step out of the easy flow is to step out of the flow of the era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We have to practice yeah. staying in the yeah. easy flow because yeah. we've practiced the hard flow. Yeah. Yeah. Every single one of us at some time, in some way, we practice the hard flow. We have to practice the easy flow every day. If it's not easy, it, deny that flow. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Amen. No, that, that, that thought troubles me. I'm yeah. going to deny it. No, no, that's not an easy thought. That's not an easy thought. That worry, worry, worry thinking is not an easy thinking. Uh, unbelief thinking is not an easy thinking because it takes all the hope out. It, it takes all the hope out. Any thought that is troubling, you're authorized to not ever touch it again. I don't care what kind of pressure the devil brings to try to, to try to trap that into your mindset. Nope, nope, I'm done thinking that way. I'm done thinking that way. You have to practice the easy flow every day. Spiritually, mentally, physically, materially. Practice it every day. In your relationships, practice it every day. No, this is hard. I'm not doing it. I remember there were times, even with my husband and I, there were times in our marriage that we were going to do this, a business decision or do this, and he goes, you know, there, it, it, we're, we're going after it, but it's too hard. It's too complicated. Yeah. He said, That's, this isn't God. Yeah. There, it doesn't smack of a flow, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and you can learn. Uh, if a relationship that you're dating and it's just hard, <laughs> you're in the wrong flow. You're in the wrong flow. You're going to have to change the scenery to change the flow. If you've got to force it to make it work, guess what? Don't try to make it easy when you can step out of what's hard and just step into what's already easy. Many people are trying to make what's hard easy. Uh-uh. No, no, it don't, it don't work that way. There's a hard flow and there's an easy flow. They're not companion rivers. You either step out of one or into the other. Many of you got your answer whether you wanted it or not. Right there, you got your answer. I was waiting for a word from the Lord. There it is. Turn to him and say, are you easy? Because if you're not easy, you're not the flow. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Are you hard to live with? Well, don't you think we ought to dismiss at this point before we go any further? <laughs> praise the Lord. It's easy, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Hallelujah. As I said, on your way home, when you're laying in bed tonight, start being specific about what you call easy. Specifically call out things that are easy. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. The will of God is easy for me. It's easy for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's sing It's Easy one more time. How about that? Oh, hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice. We just shout, shout out to the Lord. Yeah. Come on, everybody. It's easy.
it, how easy it is it, it's as easy as saying it. It's as easy as saying it. It's as easy as saying it. Amen. Even Jesus didn't see himself as doing something regarding that, that man with palsy. He said, which is easier to say. Hallelujah. You don't want to miss in the morning. You don't want to miss the evening services. I tell you what, the Holy Ghost will delight us and satisfy us. Amen. And we're going to, we're, we've come to these meetings this week to change. To change. Why? Because we are changed from glory to glory. We don't get into greater glory lest we change something. The way we think, the way we speak, the way we believe, the way we, the way we act. Amen. So we've come to change. Well, turn to somebody before you're dismissed tonight and say, everything's so easy for me. Everything's so easy for me.